How much, um, I'm going to bring it up again, but how much is this is uh, under those circumstance? You make the most threes, you win the game. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. You know, always works that way because there are other ways to, to offset. You know, I think some of the threes, quite honestly, were a byproduct of, you know, there's always a battle at the point of screens offensively and defensively. And I thought really on both ends of the floor, they won those battles there in a lot of ways. Um, I think that contributed to the ball getting where it needed to go and, um, you know, putting us in some rotations and some long rotations at times. But, um, you know, they shot the ball exceptionally well. You give them credit for doing that. Um, and, um, you know, we didn't shoot it nearly as well. And certainly we did not generate nearly as many threes, uh, you know, as they did, because I thought they did a good job defensively. It just, it just seems like it's so difficult, you know, in the, this NBA to catch up when you don't have a high volume of threes that you'll be able to shoot, because it goes right. so goes back and forth. Yep. It, you know, it does. But the other thing, too, is, you know, you can look at it the other way. You can try to take away all the threes and then basically give up higher percentage shots. You can give up more shots at the basket. You know, you can give up more free throws sometimes when the ball goes to the paint you're, you're going to be in everybody's going to be in rotation you know so you're almost having to do that i you know i like we had discussed earlier i i, I don't you know i think a lot of times when when teams take a lot of threes just generally I think it's a byproduct of the ball getting to the paint, you know, and, and the ball being sprayed out, and maybe it's creating a closeout or another guy to drive it, you know, to the paint. Uh, but everybody's trying to get to the paint because it's the highest percentage shots where fouls take place, where offensive rebounds take place. A lot of good things happen there. But, I, I you know, I didn't feel like they came down and just started bombing up threes with, you know, out of any passes. I thought a lot of it comes through ball movement, player movement, and drives, um, you know, and... Like I said, Jet generally starts at the point of the screen where it's one on one in space, guarding a guy, or whether it's two men on the ball, you know, handling pick and roll. Um, and I thought they got a lot of separation on us tonight, quite honestly, um, you know, in in, in 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 their screening actions. What is you know this game just with so few left vis a vis you and Atlanta? You know, what does it mean? You know, go, you know, for what's left? Yeah, I mean, I th I think we've got a few days here. Um, you know, I think. Back-to-backs are always challenging. They're always going to be challenging uh, physically. It's part of it. Everybody's got to deal with them. Um, we do have a little bit of a break here. I think recovery will be important for our guys, you know, to try to get back. Um, we've obviously had some guys log a lot of minutes and certainly a lot of minutes the last two nights. Um, so the break of having three days um, will be good. But certainly on the back end, it's going to be a little bit more challenging just because I think we play six games in 10 days. So that becomes challenging. And then we've still got a back-to-back, -back, one more left before the season closes out. Billy, you guys clinched a, you guys clinched a playing spot tonight despite the loss because the Nets lost. Does that change your approach at all to these final games, or the fact that the, you're still battling for home court and that nine ten seating is important? I, mean, I think you always want to play home. You know, there's there's a reason that you know the number one seeds get home court, and you know there's 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 probably an advantage you know there, so you want to get it. Um, you know, I always feel regardless of of, it, of home court or not home court, the most important thing. To, to, to your team is the team's health, you know, physically. Um, so it'll be something we probably have to talk about. Obviously, I, I didn't know what you had just mentioned other than hearing from you. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that's a positive thing. Um, you know, probably for both of us, it's probably going to come down to the wire, you know what I mean, in terms of playing that way. And, you know, now that you're in, a, if I'm not mistaken, I think after the last regular season game, maybe there's two days to you, you play that game in between. So, you know, I think those are all things we probably have to map out organizationally, you know, looking at it. Um, certainly checking with the players. I think that's important. I think everybody's a little bit different. There's certain guys that find a good rhythm of playing. Um, and there's some guys that may need rest. So we'll try to make those decisions, you know, if they, when, they, when they come. But certainly with what's in front of us, we feel like we still have a lot to play for. And to your point, the home court part of it is still part of it. And I'm sure they're going to be doing the same thing as well. Really going back to something you said earlier, do you feel like you guys are getting to the paint enough to, to draw or generate those kickout threes? I think one of the challenges for us, you know, all year long is we've been a pretty good team getting to the paint. You know, where our growth has happened and it still, I think, can be better is, is how we handle closeouts, you know, and those those decisions in closeout situations, whether it's to shoot it or create another drive. You know, there were several opportunities where, you know, we we're trying to make a run. They certainly had control of the game. But when we got it down to 12, 13, you know, you're trying to get it inside 
single digits. We had multiple possessions in a row where we had multiple drives to the basket, and we just never really capitalized, whether it was a corner three that we generated or three on the perimeter above the break or something at the rim. Like, I thought the paint stuff, we generated some good shots. Now, on some of those closeout situations in terms of the volume, you know, of of, of those screening actions, um, DeMar is elite in terms of getting to areas of the floor that he gets to, and we need that. You know, he's just so consistent all the way through. And Vooch does get his share of pick and pops, but a lot of times he's in rolling situations in the pocket, and he's outstanding in that area of the floor too. So you have two really good scorers that score from different areas of the floor. But when we do get downhill, whether it's through DeMar or DeMar getting double team or even Vooch getting double team in the post, when the ball does come out or sprayed out, you know, our ability to make the next, you know, the next the shot, the next drive, the next pass. Um, you know, I thought when we got up 11-0, it was easy because I think we generated some of those points off steals. You know, and I thought we were, to be quite honestly, with some opportunities of advantages that we had, I thought we were really sloppy with the ball, and particularly passing, you know, where we missed some opportunities to, to generate something maybe a little bit better than what we got. What, you, um, what was your thinking with playing the uh, Drummond and Vucevic most love watch for that fourth quarter? You know, I felt that, um, like I said earlier, they, they were very, very, they did a really good job on both ends at the point of the screen, you know, and I just thought that because we were not shooting the ball particularly well, you know, we were not just even the shots that we generated that were good looks, we just didn't shoot the ball well, you know, and we shot it obviously exceptionally well last night. That happens. I, I thought we needed to get some stuff at the basket, and I thought maybe with Fuchs and, and Andre out there, one roll and one pop, and it could at least generate some size. One, either on post ups, two, if there were drives, them offensive rebounding, um, and 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 then also their screening, and it was going to force, you know, them to put a smaller guy on them and maybe have to change up matchups. I actually liked. The, the shots that we generated, the defense wasn't terrible, we, but we never could quite get any traction making enough consecutive points with that lineup. But I like some of the things that they did. Uh, Billy, going back to the three-point defense for a second, um, not to say that you guys like weren't making any adjustments there, but at a certain point, like everything's going in, and, and you said like obviously the priority is trying to wall off the paint, and then you know they're putting you in long closeout situations. Like, how do you improve in those situations where they are? kind of stretching you out that way to where, you know, you are able to get out on some of those longer closeouts or you are able to kind of take some of those away just at a certain point when, like, everything's going in. You're going to get into some binds like you are talking about, right? It wasn't that. It was pulling off the corners and trying to, like, and being in the wrong position. Not enough awareness on the backside. I think they were 6 of 9 maybe or 7 of 10 from corner threes, like there's no way we should be giving up corner threes. That just shouldn't happen. I, I know it's going to happen sometimes to be in transition, but even the one to close out the half, there's a drive coming and we kind of, I think Capella's on the baseline underneath the basket. Maybe Vooch is down there. It may have been Kobe kind of got caught in and they threw it right to Matthews and he knocks down a three and the, the lead goes from five. Like that should not happen. And, and Kobe's great. You know, he knew he kind of maybe came in a little bit too much, but there was too many of those. Like those are the ones we have to clean up. There are some times you're just going to get into some binds. Like, they got into some binds, too. We didn't make those shots. You know, the, last night against Minnesota, we, we made some of those shots. So it's more the corner threes for me that we got to be better at. And I think, to your point, some of that stuff, listen, they make a great play. You get caught in rotation. It gets there, and you try everything you can do to get out there. But a lot of it was strong side. Like, those are the ones we should not be giving up. Ball side, strong side, court. like those are the ones we got. Sometimes when there's a roll and the ball gets skipped across the floor and you're in long Xing or rotating, that can be hard. And we had some of those issues tonight in particular ones, but some of them, some of them were, quite honestly, some ball side threes. And then the other thing, too, is if you're not great at the point of the screen, it's really hard. Like, you have to be really, really good there. And I thought in a lot of ways their guards got our guards off their bodies and we're, we were always kind of trailing and behind plays and probably kept our big in coverage a little bit too long because he had to protect the paint and protect the ball and not just let the ball drive downhill. Um, and that was certainly challenging for us. What did you, Last one. Quick, what did, what did you see in the paucity of the assists, you know, compared to the field goals you made? Yeah, yeah I mean, I didn't really, I, I saw, we, I mean, that's the first thing I look at. I always look at assists. The first thing, obviously, it was drastically low, but when you shoot 30 something percent um and 20 something percent from 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 the field and from three it's never going to be high my biggest thing is i always try to look at is what are the potential assists 
you know, when the reports come in, you know, tonight and tomorrow, like what, you know, how well did we try to move the basketball and did we create closeouts and did we move it well enough to create more drives, like that kind of stuff. Because sometimes the assist on a stat sheet can be a little bit misleading, you know, because a lot of it's based on whether or not the ball goes in or out. But like, I thought we had like a lot of really good potential assists. Like I thought Alex got maybe two or three threes like in the corner after some really good ball we didn't make any of them but like i thought it was really good offense and the kind of shot you want to generate we just didn't make them thanks folks yep thank you